Those whistles that you're hearing behind me is called the Turkish bird language. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you all about it. My name is Drew. Can you say it? Drew. Can you say it? Yes. Drew. Yes. Now you say my name. Drew. <laughs> <laughs> my mind is blown right oh, now. It's amazing. We are way up here in northern Turkey in a tiny mountainous village called Kushkoy. It's so remote, so fascinating. You can see the landscape is beautiful. The autumn trees are already starting to change color and it is such a cool place. Given that people out here are living in a rugged mountain terrain, they've developed this unique communication system which echoes their whistles across long distances up to three kilometers. So he's saying that he can whistle and those houses that are probably two kilometers away can hear what he's saying. This form of speaking has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years and it's been critical for farmers to facilitate animal herding in the region. Ask them if they do it so much, does it hurt their like tongue? Uh, they said no, not at all, because they're using it for many years, and this is the main communication system for them. Unbelievable! <laughs> it is like this is unbelievable. Really, the main communication system. Now uh, he's calling for Moises. Marzas dedim, ey verdi bana. Amazing. Aha geldik geldik dedim, tamam tamam dedi. <gülüyor> First he said Moazes and she said, oh, like uh, this sign of I hear. And then he said, we are here, we came. And she said, okay, come here, I'm on this way. If you just hear a whistle, can you tell who is the person whistling? He says, of course you can understand. Everyone has their own tone and way of wrestling. So he says it's easy to understand who is wrestling. She's calling for her goats and sheep to get around, to come. So the goats and sheep understand? She says, in America, in your country, uh, people are gathering the animals with horses, but in this village, they're just using the whistle to control the animals. Come here, go away, it's evening, come to the farm, etc. And I was gonna call the guy by the car and see if you can hear him. Come on, come on. He invited him for a chai and he said yes. Wow. I am beyond blown right now. What does it mean? Uh, welcome, welcome. Çok teşekkürler. Now he's going to say, can I have two cups of tea? Türkçe olarak söyleyeyim, iki çay in Kushkoy, there's no need for cell phones because those have batteries and they need to be charged. With the whistle language, as long as you have your voice, you can communicate with anyone around you. It's that simple. How many people live in the village? 6-700 people are living in this village. What percentage of them can speak or understand the bird language? He says 100% of the citizen of the population understand the language, but only 80% can speak. Are you worried that the language is slowly dying out? Of course, uh, they're worried about uh, the language it will disappear because of the technology. Technology is the biggest competitor, but they have special uh, lectures in the village for new generations to learn. For example, his son, been learning that language from those lectures. Kushköy'üne hoş geldiniz. What does that mean? Welcome to Kushköy. How many different words can you speak in the whistle language? Bu dilde kaç farklı kelime çıkartabiliyorsunuz? He says whatever you want. The mountains in this village are green. 
Yemenim. Kuşköy'deki dağlar çok yeşil dedi. Did he understand? Yeah. Okay. He, he says uh, mountains in the Kuşköy is really green. Can you explain a little bit about the origin of the language? 400 yıl, 500 yıl eskiye dayanıyor. Çünkü uh, he's saying that it goes back maybe 500 years ago. The first people who settled in this area created this language, and they were using this language to communicate with each other for the basic things because it's super mountainous area and it's really impossible to shout and communicate with a normal language but the whistle can reach further distances and it's so easy yerleşim merkezi olduğu bir günden beri dil devam ediyor The bird language is so complex that they claim to be able to translate every single word in the Turkish language. Not only that, but other languages as well. Now I'm a bit confused because I I ask him to say good morning and he asked me if he needs to say it in English or in Turkish. It's the same good morning. Good morning. I was also thinking the same. Okay, say good morning in English and then in good night in both. So I can say it. So now in English. This is good morning. How do you feel that you can speak this language that nobody else can speak except for people here? They all say they're so proud of uh, using this language because it's so unique. Say something to these kids. Like, tell them to come here. Tell them to come here. Tell them to come here. And he's coming. He, he understood. Abla, what is one message you want to say to the world? Health and, she said health and wealth. And the other one? What did they say? She said uh, to be the happiest person on the planet is about being healthy and not, nothing all. That was amazing. Thank you so much for everything. Çok teşekkürler. Çok sağ olun. teşekkür ederim. Çok sağ olun. Allah razı olsun. What an incredible experience it has been here in the Bird Village with these amazing people. I thought they would be kind of standoffish or shy or not willing to speak about their culture uh, into the camera, but it's complete opposite. They've actually invited us in for lunch. Uh, in traditional Turkish fashion. After traveling in 191 countries, I have never seen anything remotely close to this, and I always try to find uh, remote lifestyles, indigenous tribes, just to kind of see unique ways in, in which people are living and communicating with each other, and this one was the most special. I mean, I can't imagine how they learn so many different words and they're able to communicate so efficiently without even needing phones. It's so cool and I'm so happy to see that the tradition is still living on. Even the younger kids know it and I hope that it doesn't die out anytime soon because it is just really that special. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I had fun making it. It was truly a pleasure and this turkey trip just keeps getting better and better. So many more things coming soon. Hit me up on Instagram at Drabinski to follow my trip live on Instagram stories and that's all I got to say. Hope you guys are well and I'll see you tomorrow. You look amazing. Can I take a picture? Photo, okay? Fotoğrafını çekebilir miyim diyor. Buyur, buyur. Wow, this guy. He's got all the style in the world right now. If you guys ever wondered how I get these videos made when I travel, it's pretty much like this. So, I got my computer on my lap, Anos behind the wheel. I got my shirt here in the window to protect from the sun so it doesn't overheat my computer. And we have eight hours of driving today and we just started. Where are we going, Abi? We are going to Artvin, northeast of Turkey. We are driving from the southeastern point pretty much to the northeastern point. Uh, so it's across the whole country of Turkey from south to north. 
and this is undiscovered land for Anno. He's never driven this before, exactly. uh, which is a cool thing for me to experience new places with you. Same here, Anna. And uh, the trip is going wonderful. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and ring that little bell so you can get notified on all my upcoming videos as I take you to every single country in the world.